Okay, I believe we are live, letting you guys trickle in. My name is Caroline Kivitka. You can call me CK. I'm from the Rancher and Sousa community. And here is my colleague, Robert. Robert, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Robert Sertia. I'm a technical evangelist here at the Sousa Ranch community. And on behalf of the Sousa Ranch community, I'm thrilled to welcome you here today. Today, we mark the 30th anniversary of the creation of Linux, our favorite millennial. And this is a really big deal. And it's hard to imagine what the world would be like without Linux and how it's touched so many lives. And it's a huge deal for us here in the Rancher Sousa community. And if you want to know more about it, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, um, it's great. We've got a lot of people live right now. Everybody's rolling in to wish Linux a happy birthday. So we want to welcome a really special guest, someone I've had the privilege of getting to know recently. We've got Alan Clark here from the office of the CTO. Welcome, Alan. Thanks. Um, Alan is, as I said, he's part of our CTO office, but he's got tons of experience in the industry. He's an open source advocate. And my favorite part about Alan is he is the host of our new podcast, The Octopod, where Alan talks with industry people all over the industry. We're talking all about um, all things open source this season. So welcome, Alan. Great to have you here. Thanks, EK. So, Alan, with it being, you know, Choose Open and the 30th anniversary of the, the creation of Linux, what, is, what has Linux done for you over this past 30 years? And, you know, how, how has it impacted you? Linux, open source in general, Linux changed my career dramatically. Um, I started out as a software engineer writing protocol stacks. And I was doing it on Linux, or excuse me, doing it on Unix, right? Which is Linux-like, but it was very much proprietary. And uh, uh, Unix was kind of stumbling, we'll say it that way, in that era. And uh, so it was really heading down a proprietary path. And uh, uh, we, uh, in my career, I uh, managed the group of of software developer kits for our company. And we needed to create a new developer kit for a standard being created in IETF. And we had a choice at that point. Uh, didn't know anything about open source, but we could either build our own or we recognized there was one sitting out there that we could use, but we really didn't understand what open source was. So had to go learn and figure out what that was. And then the light went on and went, I really love this, this is cool. We made a lot of mistakes, uh, but it became one of the most used SDKs our company ever created. Um, but that's what got me started in open source. And from there I was was hooked and, and it grew from there. Awesome, awesome. And with that, SUSE is obviously a Linux company. We were born in the open source. We're doing amazing things in there. And those earlier contributions, I don't think anyone would have seen then growing into what it's become now. No, like I said, so the company I worked for wasn't SUSE at that point. It was a different company. And we had no, we were actually the first group within the company to do open source. Nobody really understood what it was in those first few years was a lot of discussions with, with lawyers and mm -hmm. trying to help them understand what is this open source? What is all the licensing? We had all the licensing discussions, right? And, and uh, so it was very much an educational curve. And I have to say it was Linux that opened the door, right? Um, so there were other little efforts going on, but it was Linux that really opened the door to the world's open source. And look how it's exploded today. Everybody is doing open source. And, and I'm told, and you know, this is a part of the legend around what Linux has become, is that it was Linus's uh, uh, side project, and it was just a, a side open source project that it turned in. I don't. I, I would almost say a revolution in, in what we do in computing, um, and that's just kind of interesting how it was to him it was just a side project that he put together, um, and so you don't know how something as small as a side project can turn into a, a world changing event. That's correct. Um, 
yeah, it's it's grown, it's affected and impacted. Let's not just say affected, but it's impacted almost every industry you can name, right? Mm -hmm. um, not just Linux itself, but the way we develop, the way we collaborate. Uh, I've talked to many companies that aren't necessarily doing open source as a company, but they've changed their model of collaborating within the company to model it around open source constructs, right? Uh, the ideas of transparency and so forth. So it's impacted everything we do, even hardware, not just software, right? But look at the hardware. We have open hardware nowadays. Um, so it's huge. It's almost like creating their own open source inside of inside of a company to you know leverage what we do on the outside with you know exactly. openness and collaboration. Awesome. Yeah. So, well, we have a very fun day planned for everybody today. We have a couple special guests. We're talking to Alan right now. We also have trivia today, and is that right, CK? How many questions? We have about twenty questions that we're going to be asking. These questions are history of Linux, history of, you know, other things around what this is. I'll be asking the questions and CK will be grabbing the correct answers from the chat. So to do this and do this effectively, we're going to ask you guys to, uh, I'll say, hey, it's, I'll ask a question and I'll give you A, B or C. And if it's not one of the put one of those in the chat, CK will pick the right answer and let you know. And then from there, we'll just go to the next question. And I have about 20 of... 20 or so of these to give away. If you guys haven't got one, these are called cow millions. These are, I mean, we love these. I think Alan has a box of them at home. He's a. <laughs> <laughs> I only have you, one. I had to I'll go take the box, <laughs> but I only have one. <laughs> I had to seal this one back from my daughter, so I, I, I understand. <laughs> but I do have, I do have a big guy. <sighs> you have the big so, gecko. I got the big guy. Wow. Wow. Yeah, those, awesome. that's a that's a hard one to get by it is that was a tough one to get alan so you, you want can... to stay and play trivia for a couple of rounds or do you have a open you have an octo meeting uh, to go to I, i'll <laughs> blend back with the audience awesome right. thank hey, you alan um, we appreciate you it guys. yeah thanks so much alan and um we'll we'll be talking about the podcast later and telling everybody how to find it but you guys check out the octopod with alan he's please do he's just so smart and talking to great folks so Really, you know, see you later, it, Alan. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. You can say something. Sorry, I cut you. I was going to say it's the great people, right? <laughs> it, the yeah. beauty of open source is all the people you get to meet and be friends with. So, thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. I'm so a few rules to that. So one Geeko per uh, per participant today. And we also have some stickers we'll be sending out to everybody who's joined today to celebrate this momentous occasion of Linux turning 30. I actually celebrated by decorating my office. You can't see all the decorations. That's how you know how excited I am for that. But with less to do, let's get started with what this is. And I'll start answering some questions. CK, are you ready? Yeah, so just again, the rules are um, Alan, uh, Alan, Robert's going to ask the question, and um, we're going to start you guys off soft with, with some softball, multiple choice questions. But if you want to play, just put your put your answer in the chat. Um, I'll be randomly selecting from one of the winning answers. So um, that's how we're going to do it. So right. you guys can keep playing, but only one Calmelian per customer. So here... Here we go. Ready? The first question. Okay. Well, how old was Linus Torvald when he wrote the Linux kernel? A, 22 years old. B, 16 years old. Or C, 27 years old. Okay. I'm looking in the chat for answers. You can either type the number or you can type oh. A, B, or C. Anybody? Look at this. I think we're set. Okay. We're, oh, we, we're all right. I see a winner. I got a winner. Prod. We got a winner. Prod, Prod. Right first. We have a winner in Prod. Linus. Thanks, guys. Linus was twenty-two. He was twenty-two years old when he wrote the Linux kernel. Um, so, next question. That's pretty young. Whoa. What were you doing? I was pretty young. Twenty-two, Robert. <laughs> I wasn't doing I wasn't doing anything remotely <laughs> that close. Let's be honest. Like, what was most of us doing at 22, right? Um, so, yeah. what was Linux's original name going to be? A. Links. B. Freaks. 
or C, slinks. Okay. So A was link. What was it again? A was links. B was freaks. Or free X. I'm sorry, I might be saying that wrong. Free yeah, X. Yeah, we got a winner. We got a winner. We do. I got Ignaz Forster, and that's yeah, Ignaz. Sorry, take this. Lost with with freaks, right? How do you freaks. spell freaks? It's F R E A X, and I'm sure there's a story behind that name. Um, when I found this bit of information, I was like, well, what, like why would you why would you pick that? That's that was a that was an interesting call. So. Like okay. I, I would, I don't, I, I don't know his last name is Ignaz Forrester, I think was our winner. So congratulations, Ignaz. We're taking your name down right now. Yep. We will be contacting you about how to get your account million. All right. What else we got, Robert? All right. Where was Linus going to school when he created Linux? And I'll buy you when at this time it was not called Linux, but where was he going to school? A, Caltech. B, the University of Finland, or C, the University of Helsinki? Are those real schools? Uh, I don't know about Caltech. I'm not sure if Caltech is one. I'm joking. I understand Caltech is real a real school, <laughs> everyone. What I know I'm going to get people on B? Twitter. Okay, B, was the University of B, of B was the University of Finland. Okay, was I a see Vish. It's popping up. I Vishnal, I think, had it. Sorry, it goes so fast. I know it's the correct answer is actually C, the University of Helsinki. Oh, oh wait, sorry. Who? Okay, CCC. I'm gonna sit. Okay, the sorry, I first, messed up. The, I'm gonna. The first okay. C is. Uh, is, it, is, it, is it Trent? Rock. No, Clay. Okay. Clay was the first okay. one. He actually typed it all out. So congratulations to Clay okay. there. Okay. Um, hey, hey, Robert, I think yeah. we have another special guest. Why don't you ask one more trivia question while I invite up our special guest? All right. We're going to do this a quick one right here. So what is the name of the Linux penguin? Is it A, Tux, B, Penny, or C, Pepper? Who wrote these questions, Robert? I might have written some of these answers. <laughs> Anybody got it? Oh, yeah, it, it, we do. It's Daniel Fultman with A. So Daniel, congratulations. Thank you for playing. We appreciate it. So CK Wise, you're inviting that guest up. Um, Daniel Fultman, if you will, T. Okay. Now, give us a moment, folks. Takes a, when we get special guests to, to jump on, software takes a moment for them to connect and do all that great, happy stuff. Yeah. I will tell you guys who we've got. Robert who doesn't it? even know who it is. It's kind of exciting, right? Oh, man. Um, don't, don't do this Robert, to me. Robert, I know. I know. We have joining us, hopefully very soon, um, let's see. We have Mati Matthias Eckerman. And Matthias Eckerman is Director of Product Management for Linux Platforms here at SUSE. Do you know, Robert, he has been with SUSE for more than 22 years. So that's I mean, almost, yeah. I mean, so he's, wow. I think, got a lot to say about Linux because I think most of his jobs here at SUSE have, have um, been dealing with Linux and open source. So uh, that's he's amazing. probably trying to come on. It is amazing. Um, we... While we're waiting for Matthias, who may be having some issues, do you want to ask one more trivia question? Sure, sure. I'll see if I can get Matthias on. Okay. All right. So the, the next question is, Linus Torvald also created a subsurface, an app that runs on Linux and is used for what? A, sonar, B, scuba diving, or C, spelunking? All right, we got our first. We we have our first winner with that one. It's Alex Ber Bernaldi. Answering that correctly, right B was the right answer. It's for scuba diving. So that's a right. uh, apparently that's a, a a hobby that Linus takes up. It's uh, we'll keep Great. going with some. Yeah. We'll we'll keep yeah. going with some questions. Matthias may be having some issues joining. I'm not sure what's going on, but we'll keep going. Okay. So my next question, all right, name one 
of the two James Cameron Hollywood blockbuster films that use the Linux servers in its production. Now these are hard because I'm not giving you any of the answers, but oh, we'll oh, see. Oh, we're going round two, round two with uh, open-ended questions here, huh? Okay. Round two. Someone, someone, oh. someone said Congo. That is not. Mm-mm. No. What? Congo is not the right. Lord of the Rings. Who said <laughs> Lord of the no, Rings? Avatar. I see Avatar <laughs> with Uni. Uni got Avatar. That's correct, right? That is correct. Uni. All right. Does very anyone, nice. Very nice. Does anyone know the other one? Toy Story. I haven't seen toy. Titanic. John Zorker. We'll give it to John, who, who got number two. So winners are John Zorker and um, Uni. And hopefully my trusty assistant, Brendan, is writing these down. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and it's kind of hard because well, you say James Cameron and Blockbuster, you're narrowing it down to two films because those two, there's like, there's you no know, for those two like iconic films from the, the 90s and the 2000s. So, yeah. I mean, aren't all right. they all, aren't they all, aren't all James Cameron movies Blockbusters? He might have had a flop in there, here and there. I mean, Did he's he? like Tarant He's like Tarantino. He's got he gets a couple of good ones, and then he gets a couple of flops. All right. Well, as yeah, Matthias is think, still having technical issues, we'll just continue I'm on. Try. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna try okay. one more time. But yep. All right. So here's a here's a famous one for you, for um, some of the space nerds out there. What year did the International Space Station adopt Linux as their operating system? Was it A? 2010 b 2013 or c 2015 and i'm going to look over here all right we have our first we have our first winner within kumar and we'll we'll, we'll get your name and everything i'll let ck have a, no, a moment to write that down but i believe we have our special guests on is that correct we do yep. we do hello matthias thanks hello, for everybody. joining us sorry if you had any yeah, yeah sorry sorry for you. being late but i had some some technical issues and it was not the linux desktop that was the fault <laughs> uh so, but it was the the <laughs> typical problem between the chair and the keyboard who pressed the wrong button and excluded the camera from working so sorry for that welcome everybody uh, very happy to be here um, I'm a, let's say, a latecomer in the Linux world. I only joined the Linux world in 1994 as a user. Um, so, and but I immediately joined the SUSE world as a original as a customer uh, and then 1999 as actual an employee at SUSE originally starting. Um, so uh, this is about me and, and Linux. Um, I am one of these people who started with 25, three and a half inch discs, if uh, <laughs> some of you may remember that. And the, the slower the system was, the longer you needed. So basically installing a Linux was a matter of a night and not of three minutes as it is today. We, uh, um, we, we talked about the five and a quarters and what it took to start up Linux with those drives. Yeah. So sorry for being late. The one thing I can share is that I am since uh, using a Linux desktop um, because I'm also in product management uh, with my team responsible uh, for doing that. And something I've never done in public, I hope I find this, I have a, I have a view of my desktop uh, because some people were interested in that, not believing that one can work with a Linux desktop some years ago. Um, so let me let me find that picture because I wanted to to share that. Um, really, really showing. I hope I can share here. Give me a second, please, um, because there is some more. Give me a second. How can I share screen? Can some ah here? Yeah. Okay, that's all good. Can I share the screen? Does someone know? If you hover over your picture, there's a, yeah. a, a picture of an arrow inside of a monitor. And oh, yeah. Click that, yeah. You should be good to go. 
Yes, I am. So here is here is my desk and my desktop. I hope that is visible. Uh, so so what this says about me is number one, I'm really using a Linux desktop, highly optimized, though I am very old fashioned in using uh, email. I'm using a text based email client because it's the most efficient. And I am using a keyboard, which is as old as Linux is because it was produced 1992 uh, and, and it still works uh, and it still is extremely comfortable and productive. So probably that is the connection here just to, to show this a bit. Uh, yeah, GNOME now, now these days, uh, mechanical keyboard, yes, absolutely. Um, I also used KDE and other desktops, so I am I am open there. But as I am in product management, I'm using what my product provides. I'm really using SUSE Linux Enterprise Desktop, and um, so that is a little bit of of me. Um, I'm also using this, as you see, on my private uh, notebook, uh, which is the one on the left side. So probably a little bit uh, to show about me and being a real, let's say a diehard Linux desktop user. So with that being said, Matthias, um, you know, we're, you know, in the context of our choose open right now, um, we have 30 years of Linux. What has this meant to you and your career and this, uh, this type of transformation? I mean, you've set the stage with some, you know, not only being a, a, a product owner, but also a power user of Linux. So, so for me, it means uh, that I have, because I started as a consultant, um, to me, it all, it, it really means that we have with Linux contributed um, to a, um, to a journey um, in the, um, in the, in the bigger community, which has established that uh, open source software is not only available to everybody who is interested or fascinated by it, but that we have contributed to a universal availability of high quality software, which uh, today everybody uses. I mean, everybody uses some kind of uh, cloud service directly or indirectly. Uh, everybody uses, I guess, online banking uh, or, or travel bookings or whatever. Most of these systems are running by Linux. And when we started Enterprise Linux 20 years ago uh, or discussing with customers 22 years ago or 24, then nobody could expect that Linux would drive not only clouds or containers, uh, but that the notion of open source uh, would transfer into other areas where not necessarily only Linux is looked at, but the, the spirit of Linux and open source is transferred also to other areas and also into other uh, parts of life. And one thing we should not forget, and I also would like to to mention this, I don't know if it already was mentioned, uh, is that also Git, which is kind of universe these days, is the, let's say, little brother or sister uh, of Linux um, because it was developed originally by the Linux community and is probably even more influential these days, uh, at least from a visibility in terms of developers, than Linux itself is, right? Wow. So. So that's uh, that's probably something. It is not it is not about the technology. It is not about Linux itself, but about the spirit and the uh, idea uh, ideas behind Linux collaboration, uh, being a distributed team, working as a distributed team, having the tools to work as a distributed team, uh, providing software and tools for everybody to use and extend and develop further. That's from my perspective relevant, um, and and is something that expands beyond Linux per se. So you were obviously one of the early adopters before most people to the Linux uh, community. Did you expect it to grow into what you've just explained as almost revolutionary? No. So so <laughs> when I when I 
when I started um, using it, it was just interesting as a, let's say, uh, free and open source, and that was relevant to me actually already then, uh, alternative to commercial Unix systems. As a student, you, you don't want to pay. I also use tech, uh, probably some people know that um, as a as a typesetting tool back then. So that was, I really wanted to be open and free. Um, but when we started uh, commercializing that with consulting um, end of the 90s, um, then yes, there was interest. There was interest in government and at customers, but nobody could foresee that there would be such a huge success. I think this interestingly started to really become relevant after the dot-com bubble uh, imploded. So it's it's basically that with the with the um, yeah with the with the crash of the dot-com bubble, uh, the next phase of adoption of Linux in the enterprise and in the world started. It became, it, it, it went into more serious pieces, into more serious aspects on the one side, but on the other side, people were on the market or in the world who invented new things on top of Linux or used Linux for new things. So that mm -hmm. then at the early 2000s, then the real, uh, success of of Linux started in my in my view, and this also comes with um, with the uh, consolidation. I think um, in no in the the process optimization in the Linux uh, development. I mean, if we look at at the Linux kernel and the Linux, the whole GNU Linux. Um, um, universe that we are living in, the, the key technologies that we're using today um, are all very professionally uh, managed. I think this is extremely important to say uh, and to, 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 to realize the Linux kernel is not a toy. This is really a, a group of very professional people uh, having having uh, an interest and also made um, made a profession uh, into this. Um, one of the things I also would like to share in this round is that I'm still very proud that um, my first ever appearance on a stage with a bigger number of people, over a thousand, actually was together with uh, Greg Krohn Hartmann, um, uh, who, who I think is a is a well known guy in the Linux kernel community. Actually, also a very nice guy, very nice person, and uh, I still uh, I still um, consider this one of the uh, important uh, points in my life. Uh, really, a being on stage, b being on stage with Greg. So that was really uh, really great for me, also also personally. Wow. That's a that's an amazing story. Uh, and I apologize for I have balloons part of my my decorations for today, and that's one of them accidentally popped. So I apologize for that interruption. Um, but thank you. So, for that so one story. thing I also wanted to share before I switch off my video and also let others speak. I don't know if this is so visible, but I have a, a few uh, cups there in the background. Mm -hmm. So this these uh, or or mugs I think is the correct English word. These mugs show a little bit of the history of my history at SUSE. So the the one, the yellow one there is the oldest one that's that's even older than than me as a SUSE employee. And and so there are a few others in between uh, that show a little bit uh, of, of the history. So that's that's my background uh, in the in the double sense of the world word. Awesome. You might have to send us a picture. That's we can post that into in community. That'd be great. <laughs> Whoa, Robert, we've, we've just, another special guest has just joined us. Uh, oh, you, I, th I see you brought Tux Matthias. up because. <laughs> Matthias, thank you so much. This has been, I mean, so amazing to hear all your words and take us back in time. Thank you so much, Robert. Anything else to No, say thank you, Matthias, for your, for okay. your time. Bye bye. Love it. Thanks for joining. Bye. Um, yeah, we've got, um, I think we're going to play maybe a couple more rounds of trivia. And uh, we've got Tux here. We promised you guys a penguin. I delivered on the penguin. I um, 
I want to just give, just thank everybody for coming. I see some really special guests out there. You know who you are. Thank you for your support, called, and we love I it. Yeah. Dude called the Columbus Zoo. I asked to borrow a penguin for the day. They apparently you can't just go borrow one. So it's just I asked for one. As I said, this is a special occasion for having a penguin. So anyhow, let's get back to trivia because that's why a lot of yeah. us are here, and that's what I love. So last question we had was around the uh, Linux operating system running on the space station or the International Space Station, for that matter. So that was our last question. So we'll go to the next one. And we're gonna go back to multiple choice here for this question. And what celebrity shares a birthday with Linux? Is it A, Sean Connery, B, Jennifer Aniston, C, Roger Moore, or D, Miley Cyrus? Wow, that's a hard one. All right. I see, some C guesses. Um, I see an A guess. Um, oh, yeah, it's Jao P- uh, Paulo Fernandez. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was Yao. Yeah, Yao had it with Sean Yow. Connor. You're right. But um, hey, fun fact, Robert. Hmm. Miley Cyrus does not share the birthday with Linux, but her dad, lesser known, Billy Ray, Billy Ray Cyrus, does share uh, with Linux. So, all right. Yeah, we had Yao Billy- as our winner. Bill, I knew I know Billy Ray more than I know Miley Cyrus, so that should tell you how old I am. I'm like, oh, I know Billy Ray. I listen to his I, I listen to his albums. All right, All right. so cool. here's the next the next <laughs> question. Here is what language was the kernel written in? Right, what was the predominant programming language that it was written in? Now, this is the hard one. I'm not giving you A, B, or C. So. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, we actually have an answer right there. Alok Maru, Maru, Maru. Well, actually, yeah. Yeah. So he he that actually. C language. Uh, yeah. Whoever said that, that's correct. It is. <laughs> it is predominantly C, and it is, has a few other languages spat, uh, spattered in there, and of course assemblies in there. Because why not? Because. All right. All right, so I'm gonna go to our next question here. So how about how many lines of code was the first version of Linux have? Did the first version of Linux have, right? And the first version was 0.01 in its versioning system. Mm -hmm. Got, we got some 18 lines. No, it's not 18. I had to verify this through Git, by the way. And you can do that. Hmm. Got a couple close. Like I'm getting with it. If you're, you're within a couple hundred, I'll, I'll give it to you. All right. I think. I got oh, I see it. Someone's um, Googling. <laughs> I know. Someone's Googling. Pragna, Pragna said 10,239. That is correct. Yes. Now Prognath. that is that is actually minusing a lot of <laughs> the white space lines because those don't count in programming. If you are a developer and you understand, if you were a judge on how many lines of code you wrote, you you hit enter six times and you're like, oh, those count as lines. But that's just excluding white space or white or non-breaking spaces with nothing on them. So good guess right there. Try to play fairly and not and not Google these answers. I All don't right. think we said no Googling, but you know. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah, spirit of the game. All right. So next question: yeah. What was the first the the first official version of the Linux kernel? So this one's interesting because I didn't know this was true. What are you looking for, Robert? Like a, a dot number or what? It would be a, it would be a semantic version number. So it'd be a dot number. Okay. And mind you, we have a lot of Linux gurus here at SUSE, and so I, verifying this information is, is was easier than I, I was, thought. Do you, do you see it? Hold, hold, is it? Let me see. Is it dot one? It is not dot one. No. It is not dot one. It is not. It's actually I see it. Sure. Oh, I see it. Sure, I got it. Zero point yeah. zero two. Point zero two. That's correct. I didn't know this was true. I actually thought the point zero one version was that, and I got corrected on that. So, of this version, there was a few applications that could run, and I'm looking for two in particular. Um, and there was like I'm talking four, but there's two in particular, two major things that were running, were able to run on this kernel. 
go ahead and try to guess these two applications. And we still use these things very frequently. And if you've done any of my challenges, you, I guarantee you, you've used one. That's not Zlib. For you guys wondering why I'm looking up here, I'm not seeing it. All right, I see one of the two is up there. One of the two. Come on, guys. Who said VI and Elm? All right, there it is. Ignaz, I think, Ignaz, you've answered that. You've already got one coming. Appreciate you answering that, but it's, let's get it to, this, to the next person who gets it. This is a hard one. I actually thought it was get to, but it wasn't. It's okay, Ignaz, you can keep answering. Yeah. <laughs> we love it. Someone yeah. said links. Wait. Well, oh, the answer's been sitting up there, and someone just hasn't copied and pasted, copy pasta that answer up there. Yeah, there it is. Daniel Livingston, Bash, and GCC. Those are the two core things that were running on the first kernel, and so that was an interesting one to me. Hey, Robert. Yes. I gotta, I gotta let Tux go because we have a uh. very special guest. Who, so, who else um, you got lined up for this one? Oh, I think you guys might know. Tux, we're going to let you go. Goodbye, Tux. Robert, we have, not Tux, we have CEO of SUSE, Melissa DiGionato, joining us. And I've just invited her up on stage. And everybody knows Melissa is the CEO of SUSE, but I'm going to let you guys know a few fun facts. Hi, Melissa. Oh dear, um, fun facts are never good when it comes to me. Oh God. Just a couple. Holy um, Moses, what's gonna happen right. here? I'll only share a couple, but my favorite is, um, I knew Melissa was a drone pilot, but I loved when I found out she actually named her drone Daisy, because I just got a car and I named it too. So a woman after my own heart. Welcome, Melissa. We're so excited to see you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. You guys look great. Way to go, hey? Thank 30 you, years my god i mean linux is older than me how'd that happen uh, just barely just barely but my teeth <laughs> <laughs> so melissa thank you and welcome to the community's birthday bash that we have here for linux um but on this special occasion and in the context of you know choose open what does linux turning 30 mean to you in, in your own words if you don't mind yeah wow um well first uh, linux is nearly older than me so that that's good news right i mean just barely as we said um you know for me i remember linux from 28 years ago so for those of you who don't know i am an sap r3 engineer i was developing lines of code in abop and um uh, and basis back in 2000 well no let's see, 2016 minus 20 years. So 1996. <laughs> so it makes me a little bit older than I think Linux anyway. Um, so when I was a developer developing SAP code, I can remember so clearly the move that we were making from Unix to Linux, right? And, and this whole like, you know, little penguin started showing up everywhere and Linux was the next mainstream thing, um, you know, for us, you know, now, 30 years ago um, with SAP, well, about a little bit less, about 25, 26 years ago with SAP. So th this is a birthday celebration that I feel like ages me a bit because it's been a part of my life for so many years. But what I love about Linux is so much a part of the, of the thesis and the culture that I think that I subscribe to, which is that Linux has been and continues to be completely transformational. Um, as many of you know, uh, we did an IPO May the 19th of this year, and I talked to the investors a lot about the role that Linux plays and, and SUSE, frankly, play in the world. You know, not only are, what did they say, 10,000, right, lines of code added to Linux every single day. It makes, it makes us, it makes Linux the fastest and most efficient software development model in the world, I mean, the history of software. And, and when I positioned SUSE being powered with, with Linux, it's the enterprise, I talked about Linux powering the world. I talked about air traffic control services and autonomous driving with safety Linux. We talked about weather forecasting with ZNAMG and loads of others, banking and financial systems, which, by the way, the bankers love to hear about, right? We talked about 500 of the top and largest, most important supercomputers in the world. 
We talked about Linux being in space. Of course, you have to talk about Linux being in, in perseverance, right? I mean, that that just, I mean, I, I couldn't have made it up in the most perfect time, right, for an IPO, especially the importance of Linux in the world. We talked about you know, how proud I am as the CEO of SUSE to be helping Linux really be a main part of satisfying the world's demands around security and performance, like the world's most critical and important brands. But at the same time, you know, creating very specific use cases for Linux distros to be able to affect life around the world. In fact, I'm writing, I'm writing right now an article, hopefully it'll get picked up, about the importance of not just being open, but the role that open source and Linux play in the world in saving lives, right? And if you think about like, what would the world look like? I'm kind of getting goosebumps when I think about it, but like what, what would the world look like without Linux? I mean, it'd be vastly different than the world that we know, right? So on a personal level, it means a lot to me. I, as I mentioned, Robert, earlier, you know, I started my career you know, 20 beep years ago, right, as a developer coding SAP R3. R3 is like, you know, for those of you who don't know, like a couple of generations ago, right? Um, and to build the first applications to sit on Linux. And now you fast forward and here I am having the incredible honor and privilege of running, you know, a Linux and enterprise Linux system and, and company. Combine that with Kubernetes and Edge of which, you know, we're taking our claim here at SUSE. I feel like you know future innovation for me and, and the role that Linux plays in this innovation is going to way outpace and pave the way for any other open source technologies that will come after us, right? So Linux to me means um, it's, it's got a really historical part of, of my heart, right? And of my fingers back when I was a developer. But it also, I think, takes a role in projecting us to innovation forward and, and not and not just you know, leading the pathway to other open source technologies like Kubernetes. And we, and we all know that, you know, Kubernetes, something like, you know, 90 percent of all containers have Linux at the heart. Right. The role that Kubernetes is going to play you know, with containers, the role that Kubernetes is going to play in edge computing, um, you know, it, it's it's. Um, you know, one has to be taken aback by the fact that, you know, Linux has powered our history, but it's going to be the underlying pinning innovation that's going to change our future. Um, and when you look at the number of devices, whether it's, you know, vehicles, robots, security machines, mammogram machines, CAT scan machines, all being powered by Linux, um, you know, what does it mean to me? Uh, you know, I think our lives, frankly, depend upon it. I think the health of our of our families, of our future during COVID, post-COVID, this is this is all about um, the power that Linux provides. I mean, you know, it, Linux and space is one thing, but don't make any mistake. The importance that the role that Linux plays here on Earth for us today is is wicked important. So, I mean, I, I mean, that's a lot, right? I answered a very long question. Sorry, I think I took more than my five minutes. But um, okay. you know, what, what role does Linux play for me? Um, you know, I mean, it powers our economy. It powers our well-being. It powers our lives. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot more to come in this space. Imagine what we'll do um, in the next 30 years. Oh, well, Melissa, we want to thank you for these inspirational words. And on behalf of our community, we want to thank you very much for joining our celebration and being part of this, you know, 30 years. And we're looking forward to the next 30 years of what Linux has to offer for us as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Hello to everyone in our community. Um, I love hearing from our community. You know, I, just one quick thing and then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll go off. So I won't take your, your, um, your, uh, you having the quiz and stuff, right? So I won't take the thunder because I don't have any of the answers, but uh, you know, it's, it's amazing to think about what, where we've come from and where we're going. Um, and what I'd like to say to the community is when we created our Sousa Diamond, you know, the heart of this company, you know, the, literally the lifeblood of this company, our diamond has four points. And one of those diamond points is our community. And everything we do, the decisions we make, the integration we have with our community is critically important. So, I, a, you know, a, a heartfelt and personal thank you to everyone in our community. Um, you keep us going. You give us the air that we breathe. And um, anything I can do um, to be a bigger part of the community or to be integrated with you guys, call on me. I'll join, especially if you serve drinks and stuff. Um, even if it's online drinks, I'll still I'll still rock up. But thank you very much for including me um, and being part of the community today. But I, I look forward to future interactions as well. Of course. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank bye. you. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys. All right. Bye. 
Wow. Wow. I, I, uh, I think you got a, I think you got a little verklempt there a little bit. I, you know, I got, okay. I, I got a little verklempt. <laughs> you can see it. You can see me. I was, I got a little starstruck. I got a little starstruck. There's right. not every day that you, uh, that you get a, a visitor like that. So, so, but let's get back to our, we have questions. We have questions. Yeah, we want to finish think, out. I think we have time for we we have time for a few more questions. I think that sure. is it for our special guest. So yeah, let's let's hit those questions. All right. Then, uh, so, <laughs> all right, we're gonna we're gonna this is this is gonna be a hard one right here, guys. This is uh, who created the first known distribution of Linux. So this one's hard. This one's a difficult one. I'm gonna see everyone googling right now. See so a lot of energy. She, that's right. She does have a lot of energy. Melissa has. Tons Incredible. of it. Incredible. Yeah. I need to bottle that up. It was not Mark Shuttleworth. It was not Linus. It wasn't that's a T the, the Debian one. No, no, no. It was actually we're looking for, we're looking for a name of a person, right? Is that what yeah, we're yeah. His name is Anybody? Uh, I think this one might have been a little too hard for the group here. Oh, man, Drake, the, the sweet red hat. We're giving like distros. Like, <laughs> who wrote that distro? That's the first known one. It was actually, I want to give the answer out. I want to give the answer out. And so it's called, uh, the gentleman's name was H.J. Lou, right? And so yeah, I would have said, I thought, what said. I thought it was Linus. Not I thought it was Linus. They that guy corrected on that. He, he was the he was the first known version was was by H J Lu. All right. So what year? Next question. This one should be a lot easier. What year was the version one dot zero of Linux kernel released? This should be really easy because you know who gave you the answer. But Matthias gave us the answer of this. Oh, I was this say is an easy one. She could yeah. have dropped it in there. I was a little starstruck. I know you, you were. Like, you see, you see that. <laughs> it wasn't ninety-one. It was not. <clears throat> it's close though. Okay, I'm looking. Uh, I'll give you guys. There it is. Flavio guys. got it first. Oh, Flavio! Wait. Did Flavio win before? Yeah, Flavio. Flavio. He did. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank nineteen ninety-four. Awesome. All right. So we have, this is a, a, a kind of a SUSE uh, uh, related question here. Um, when SUSE released its first Linux operating system, it was based on what Linux operating system? And so for, for people who have the Linux knowledge, everything's based on another one. We forked the version and went off. So what is that original uh, distribution? There it is. Oh, Ra Raj. Radosh S. Yeah. Radosh yep. S. Got it. Got it. It was Slackware, and I didn't know that actually. I, I got that one wrong too. Our uh, the, the Linux minds we have here were a wealth of this knowledge. All right. So here's one. If you guys don't get, I'm gonna have to probably write an article about it. But when did OpenSUSE hit the scene? What year was that? Boom! 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 Guys, we don't know this one, man. We're gonna, you know what? This is why I'm kind of disappointed we missed our open SUSE summer's open talk today because we could have talked oh. about this. Malcolm close Mal six, close Malcolm, and close Sayanta. Nope, no, nope. I'm seeing 2012. There, it is. there we go. Steve got it. Steve, Steve Herzig had 2005. Did Steve already win? Steve already I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna say he did not. So there you go. All right, okay. Steve. Awesome. It's on Wikipedia. You guys can double check it there. Um, next question. This article was written and, and published, um, and he said Linux is obsolete. Who was the individual who said this? And he was a very, very famous, uh, still famous uh, computer scientist. Ooh. And no, it's not Steve Ballmer. I'm just going to say that now. It wasn't Steve Ballmer. It wasn't Bill Gates. They didn't say that. So no one put that in there. I know that's not true. Like you guys are trying to do this. See, I know I, I, these, these guys are being funny. <laughs> these guys are being cute here. <laughs> there it was. Josh Snar got it. It's Tannenbaum. Oh, Josh got it? Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, what? 
Should we do a couple more questions and then I do want to I do want to address that we had some questions in the chat and where and where would people can oh, ask sure. those. But okay. you want to do a couple more uh, couple more questions? I got I I think I got one or two, or two maybe three left. So let me get, let me grab a couple yeah. of them and then we can wrap up the questions okay. real quick. Yeah. What is the licensing of the Linux kernel? So what was it back then and what was it now? This one should what be easy. What is the license of the Linux kernel? Okay, yeah. I gotcha. By the way, Matthias gave you this answer. He said it twice. I was like, ah, don't say it. These guys are, if they're listening to you, they're going to get it. Okay, somebody said GPL. Sasha says GMU. Okay. Saying GMU. All right, is so who's the first? Just... Yeah, new GNU is the first. So Sasha Buller, Buller got it. Um, it's technically, it, it was released under the G G GNU GPL, and then it was updated to the GNU GPL version two a few years later. So that was just kind of interesting. I just, I'm, I'm learning my history as well. So one last question we got here. <laughs> um, what is this? Mm. Serving as a sponsor, working with permission from Linus Torvald and Andrew Martin, in what year did the open source development lab get created? I didn't even know this one. This one's way out there. This is this is very obscure. And if you guys get it, I'll be shocked. In what year did the open source development lab get created? I'd be throwing in like 1992, 96. I'd be throwing out some numbers out there. 79. Because I would have just guessed. Oh. You're really close, Chirag. You're really okay. Uh, I think John meant 2000. Well, what did he? He, he wrote 200. What did he, <laughs> you mean? 2000, John? <laughs> did John already no. win one? Oh, he might have. Okay. okay, I, I, okay, I see it. I got him. Sorry for messing up your names, guys. We we're going really fast. So yeah, we we usually get a, a we get an got opportunity to year. practice your names. Y2K was. I got it. Okay. Um, one so, last question, Robert. Let's do it. Uh, we want to do the last one? All right. On January 22nd, 2007, OSDL, and that's the Open Source Development Lab, and the Free Standards Group merged to form what foundation? So on January 22nd, 2007, the Open Source Development Lab and the Free Standards Group merged to create what foundation? And so no, it was. Oh, there no, we no. go. Jo these yeah, guys got it. John. John. Oh, Alan's playing. Hey, Alan's still Alan. Playing. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Alan's favorite. <laughs> John Did John already John. win one? I don't know. Uh, I think jo now John had already won one. Anybody? Okay, so we'll give it. Well, I guess I'll be sending Alan a chameleon, but whoever else got it second, I gotta scroll back and see. Um, <laughs> So as I, I look, I, I, I think I it was Sayanta Banerjee. Sayanta Banerjee got it with Linux Foundation. Somebody said so, CNCF. So what's the deal with CNCF and Linux Foundation, Robert? Can you explain that one? Uh, no, 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 I can't okay. actually. Well, I no. believe CNCF, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, is part of the Linux Foundation. I, I know, know that exactly. part. I don't. Yeah. I, I don't know how the origins came, and I don't want to destroy the story and ruin it for everybody. Yeah. So, I know there. It's a. Yeah. It, it's affiliated, but I don't want to misspeak on that. But I know we have some questions. Was, yeah, well, I am seeing a lot of questions in the community, and um, they're kind of some of them are a little bit technical. Um, so rather than answering those, maybe Robert, you could tell sure. us. Like so, we we had one yesterday actually about how I start with Linux and DevOps, and I think, go ahead. So if you have questions, these are great questions, and we're coming up as time wrapping up this event. If you have these questions, I implore you to reach out to SUSE or community.susa.com. You can click on the link at the bottom of this webinar and you can literally join and continue the conversation there. We have a much deep, in-depth <laughs> training that we're starting next week around Kubernetes. We also could give you an opportunity to meet other people of like-minded, right? So if you have these questions, these are 
perfect place to go sign up and post those questions there. I sometimes get to it, but what I've learned about our community is that mostly other community members will jump on and answer those questions for you. And that's what being a community is. We are here to support and take care of one another and answer these questions. So if you did answer, ask a question in the chat here, I implore you to click on the link, sign up at uh, SUSE or community.susa.com and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll answer it on the other side for you. Um, that being said, we want to thank everybody for coming. This means a lot, not only for me personally, but on behalf of the rest of the community. This is a great time. We have a great turnout here, some spectacular guests. And as I said before, join us in the community. We do have a Slack channel for, uh, around some of the Rancher products. You can join that as well. But what we got going on is generally based on what our community uh, forums have in there. A lot of great training coming up. No Rancher 2.6 will have a lot of great information uh, is coming out with a lot of great information around that. My coworker, Luke, he's coming together with some awesome training as well. So we implore you guys to sign up. Thank you again, CK and the rest of my community team that helped bring this all together. I can't, we couldn't have done it without you guys. You guys were amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, and I think, Robert, I don't think we actually said, did we say happy birthday to Linux? So happy birthday, Linux. That's happy birthday, Linux. Um, it's really great seeing everybody. And, you know, as Robert said, I know we recognize a lot of folks out there who are active in the community already, but if you're not, um, please join us, community.susa.com. Um, we've got lots of content. We've got live content going um, multiple times a week. We've got blogs, we've got training, um, but best of all, you know, a place for you to reach out. Whether, you know, if you're a newbie, it's great for newbies. It's great for experience. Everybody on all, you know, wherever you are in your cloud native journey, we'd love to see you there. So please do join us and just, yeah, thanks everybody for coming together today. It was a lot of fun. Thank you to our special guests. Um, we had Alan Clark, Matthias Eckerman, and of course, Tux. Thank you, Tux. And um, really awesome that we had Melissa joining us today. That was a lot of fun. And um, so big thanks to her. For making the time and you know just showing obviously she thought it was pretty important to celebrate linux with you guys so thanks to our community really appreciate you guys thanks for being here today thank you